I'm here today at the headquarters of Hargreaves Logistics, one of the UK's leading bulk transport specialists, to find out what they're doing to improve operational efficiency. It's 12 months since you made the acquisition in Harlow. How is it going? Uh, yeah, we're really pleased with the way it's been going. Uh, November, we nearly hit a million pound turnover, so that was far ahead of our expectations. Um, so it's been interesting working with the drivers who are not used to uh, the Hargreaves uh, way of doing things, but they've responded incredibly well. And they've all been out with our driver trainer on a SAFED day, and we've seen absolute improvements in uh, MPG, fuel, and most importantly, a reduction in accidents and incidents since we've been involved. So you're deep now in the operating in the heart of London. All this stuff from TfL must be filling you with bread. No, we love it down there. Uh, I come from South End actually, so uh, it's right on my doorstep. But we've been looking for a depot in London for more than two years. And we've always operated in London, but struggled with the Monday morning, Friday afternoon regime. Now that we've got a great fleet down there, um, we're more involved in collection and disposal, uh, another area we wanted to get into to get up the food chain. So no, we're very happy with the way it's going. And how many trucks are there in that Harlow fleet? Uh, so at the moment we're running probably about 35 down there, uh, but I've just placed an order for 10 more uh, Volvo Rigids and they'll be joining the fleet from May onwards. I think that's mainly Muckaway, isn't it? Uh, Muckaway was the core prior business, but uh, we've added to that the tippers and the walking floors. Right. Uh, now we've got a base down there at last, um, so we can start in the south and end up in the south rather than working our way down from the Midlands or the north as we did previously. So what else have you got in store? Any more acquisitions in the pipeline you can tell us about? Uh, we have got uh, one or two acquisitions that we're working on at the moment. Um, we're, we're looking to potentially run a, a train up from London to our uh, site in Maltby. We've just got uh, planning permission for the site in Maltby as a recovery site. So that is excluding uh, landfill tax, it's rail connected, um, so we're working with our customers to see whether or not there is anything worth developing on that front. How often is that train going to run? Uh, six trains a week uh, is what we're looking at potentially. Um, and um, yeah, we can run that into a multi site where we've got a 1.2, uh, 1.3 million tonne void. So uh, that will take us through the next 10 years, maybe uh, and will be very useful when we're looking at HS2, which has got enormous amount of uh, earth to shift. So the outlook for 2017, is Brexit giving you any concerns? We have lost one contract on the back of uh, Brexit, where the customer decided not, not to, or to postpone a particular project. Um, other than that, the group has done probably okay because of the rates, uh, the, the exchange rate. Um, for me, it doesn't really have a great impact. I think it's a steady year coming up. Um, but we're quite comfortable where we are. There's you know, a busy January, which is always good. Um, so yeah, pretty confident for the year ahead. We've just bought another 21 trucks to replace five-year-old trucks. So uh, yeah, we're quite happy where we are right now. I see you've moved over to Mercedes from Scania. What's happened there? We, we've always had a mix of Scania and Mercedes. Um, and as I've just said, we've just brought Volvos into our rigid fleet in London. So I always think health, healthy competition is, is good. Uh, we're very pleased with the Mercedes, I have to say, um, and we've got a 3% improvement on MPG with those. Uh, so uh, I'm not discounting Scania going forward, but they've obviously got to, uh, they've obviously got to come to the table and, and be responsive and give us what we need. Have you got more trailers coming down the line? Uh, we have. Uh, we've just placed an order for some V-floors, which are uh, sort of an alternative to a traditional rigid delivery where um, it's a walking floor but works with various construction materials so they're quite uh, expensive um, but uh, you know proving popular with the construction market uh, we're just uh, looking to place an order for some uh, sealed walking floors with a drip tray underneath right. uh, and, and they're proving it, uh, of interest to the, the food waste side of the, the industry which is growing uh, rapidly um, but obviously there is a potential, well, there is a risk with a standard tip trailer of leakage so uh, that's another innovation so yeah we're always looking to see how we can develop into niches. So what are your big challenges? Driver shortage becoming an issue? Have you got a queue of drivers working for you surely? Well we have in London, 
much to my surprise and uh, pleasure. Um, we're fine in the North East. Yorkshire and the Midlands is a challenge uh, because there are so many RDCs um, offering fixed, fixed salaries, uh, fixed hours, um, but not every driver wants that, quite honestly. Um, they like the variety that we can offer. Um, biggest challenge of the next 12 months, uh, undoubtedly, is uh, price. Um, it's hugely competitive as ever, uh, and the customer really wants, I guess, our PLC, uh, our quality, our safety at, at the lowest possible price, which I can't blame them, uh, but th there is a lot of uh, pressure on price, so we've got to be efficient, we've got to make sure that we don't waste any money, don't spend any money unless we have to, and keep lean, essentially. But yeah, price pressure is always right. there. So I can grant you one wish of our government what are you going to say? Uh, to leave us alone, probably. Um, yeah, I mean, when they're messing with overnight allowances, it causes a problem. I would say that, you know, that is one area that they're not helping us. If you mix government with Transport for London, uh, these uh, interventions from the mayor are really not helpful. I think last year there were three fatalities uh, involving HGVs in London, which is three too many but none of them involved a left turn. So, you know, if, if there's 130,000 vehicles going to London, if, if now, you know, there's a new set of standards that are not part of the government's construction and use regulations, how is that helping? So we just need some joined up thinking. Thanks, Andrew, thanks for your time. So that's Andrew Walridge, Managing Director of Hargreaves Logistics.